Cheech. I'm Curtis. And we are Fly Fish Food. Fly Fish Food, yeah. We weren't going to do that in unison. We're gonna... <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> so uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Allen hooks. We've had a lot of uh, people ask questions about uh, they are a lower priced hook and how good are they? Do we use them? And so we're going to get into a lot of that today, talk about uh, what we use them for, kind of some of the differences between those and other hooks out there, and help you understand a little bit about it all. So, Yeah, and, and to help you understand a little bit about, you know, the evolution of hooks and specifically how they're sharpened and the points and the barbs and all that kind of stuff, uh, we'll, we'll break it down with you, starting with some of the, the old mustad hooks, and we'll build it up to kind of the day that we're in right now um, as uh, I, I've heard many times we live in the good old days of fly tying we have so many good things you know available to us and Allen hooks are definitely one of those things that we're really privileged to have to be able to use. We have on the table three popular hooks I guess two of them are really popular they've been around for a long time and the Allen B200 and the reason we have this is because the Mustad is what everybody's grandpa used to tie with. It was the only thing available, caught plenty of fish, uh, and, and in reality it's a, it's a really good fish hook. Um, the thing about the Mustad, as you can see, you know, if you look really carefully, is it's got, you know, a pretty big barb on it. The other thing is the Mustad is not a chemically sharpened hook, these old classic Mustads, and they've since gone to the Signature Series, which are chemically sharpened. But chemical sharpening is, is very key. And so, you know, Mustads were around forever, and then you got hooks such as Daiichi's or Tiemco's. And they're, they're hooks made in Japan where they, they were able to use chemical sharpening uh, procedures to make really high quality hooks. And so the thing about this is when these came out, it was very apparent that, you know, people kept with their mustads because these were pretty expensive. And they still are more expensive than mustads because of the chemical sharpening process. Very high quality hooks. And so a lot of other valued hook brands, you know, value brand hooks or people try to knock off the chemical sharpening process. And it was quite a work in progress before they got it right and so just like any other product in the industry once it's been out for a while um, other companies are able to pick up on it and improve the process and so fast forward to now where we have an excellent excellent hook in the Allen B200 it's a chemically sharpened hook with a micro barb just like this Daiichi over here which happens to be the 2461 one of the best streamer hooks on the market right now but I'm going to show you that what we call the thumbnail test. The thumbnail test is you, something you can do with any hook or any fly to test you know, how sharp it really is. So we'll take this. Okay, so I'm going to take the hook and I'm going to rub it across my thumbnail. And you can see this, this mustad doesn't really want to dig in very well. Maybe a little bit because I've been playing with this. But here's, a, here's a fresh fingernail. Okay, so I'm going to scratch it across. And it's not really going to catch very well. Take a chemically sharpened hook, this Daiichi 2461, and I'm going to put it into my fingernail and I'm not even going to be able to move it. I'm not putting any pressure on there. I'm just taking that and it's digging right into my fingernail. That's the sign of a good hook. So the Allen B200, I'm going to do the same thing and you can see that it is absolutely, you know, maybe not quite as sharp as a Daiichi, but it is absolutely digging into my fingernail. So that's the fingernail test and a chemically sharpened hook will always dig in better than a non-chemically sharpened hook. So now you know um, what makes a hook good, I guess, and, and sharp. We're gonna break down um, some of the different models of Allen hooks that we really prefer. Um, you'll see on our site, which is store.flyfishfood.com, uh, on the hook section, we have a kind of a, an array of Allen hooks. We don't have them all, uh, and that's because, you know, we're pretty selective about the hooks that we bring into the store, and these are hooks that we, we, we really swear by. We fish these hooks all year. In fact, 
90% of my hook, my, my fishing um, for the past, I guess, two and a half years has been on Allen hook. Okay, so here we have our favorite Allen hooks that we tie with a lot. And you've seen these all in our store. Um, first of all, we have the Allen B200. That's, um, you know, it says bass bug. And a lot of these hooks will have like carp, bass bug, nymph, streamer, whatever it may be. But, you know, that doesn't mean that it's limited to that amount, to that, uh, you know, classification. For example, this bass bug hook, we tie mostly trout flies on it. The El Sculpito, the Lunch Lady, the Mongrel Meat, all tied on the bass bug because it has a wide gape. The S402 is the fly that the Cheech Leech is tied on. It's a 2X long streamer hook, really beefy hook. I've never had any issues with that hook whatsoever. And caught tons and tons of fish on it. And now the carp hooks are, are some of the newer hooks that, that Alan has released. And as you can see, this hook is somewhat offset, which makes setting the hook a little bit easier. You can see that the hook is not all the way on this mat, and if I push it down, the, the hook pops up. It's slightly offset. All of the low-fat minnows that we tie for orders are tied on this exact hook right here. Um, and then this one's actually a, a, a awesome hook. And they actually make this small enough you can tie chronomids on it, but it's a barbless hook. A little bit lighter wire than the MP002, um, but you know, because it doesn't have a barb, it's actually going to penetrate a little bit better. Um, now this hook, I think, is misclassified to a certain degree because it says carp. But this hook is a dead ringer for the Gamakatsu S10. In fact, um, I've switched to tying most of my terrestrial flies on this, this hook and haven't had any problems. I, yeah, I've tied all of my Bling Noble ants on that same hook and it's phenomenal. So that's an awesome dry fly hook just as, you know, could be used on a lot of other things. And I'll let Curtis talk about this <laughs> shrimp and caddis pupa hook because he's Mr. Chronobong. Yeah, so this is a great one for chronomids. It's uh, thick enough that you're not going to have any uh, deformation of the hook. I've also used it on my chimera pattern a few times, but it's great for chronomids, um, caddis pupa, you know those types of things and uh, <clears throat> then the final one which is our jig hook uh, one of our better selling hooks it's good for uh, tying just you know any sort of jig nymph or uh, any pattern that you want to ride hook point up um, and they're barbless so that you do have some quick penetration on that uh, I've used it a lot in uh, patterns for euro nymphing so um, it's a good good hook as well but anyway you know, these are our favorite models. Um, and then Alan, Alan has a, a really good quality control department, and they're, they're always trying to improve on their hooks. And I think that these are, are some indications of that. So anyway, these are, these are hooks that we use all the time. And, uh, you know, we, we have access to almost any hook on the market. And uh, we, we choose to tie with these quite a bit. So, as an example on why we choose the hooks we choose, um, I, I've had several bad experiences with bad hooks. Probably one of the craziest ones was I had a bunch of patterns tied with two different types of hooks. One was chemi chemically sharpened, the other was not. Same patterns, crazy hatch, fish going off everywhere, and the first five or six uh, I could not hook up. They were on and off, on and off, so, qu so quick. I ended up taking that... Uh, hook off that fly off and substituting it with one I knew has been tied on a better hook. Total different difference, or total immediate difference, and didn't lose a single fish the rest of the day. So it is important that, uh, and that's why we're going over these so that you understand, we're not just, uh, you know, we, we trust these hooks and... Uh, is that the day that you caught all those walleye? Uh, yeah, the walleye. This uh, red walleye, the yellow walleye, the rainbow walleye, and... I think that's actually a pike. The pike walleye, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was that day. <laughs> that was that day. All right, you know, and, and we, we wanted just to show you, you know, this is a Cheech Leech. If you've ordered a Cheech Leech from us, Allen Hooks. This is the Sculpito that's tied on the Allen B200. And then these are just some muddlers that we've been posting lately, and those are all tied on Allen Hooks as well. So, 
from fly fish food to you, don't forget that fish eat. That's it. <laughs> they want to see your face. <laughs>